<laughs> ambient vlog number one. All right, so we're in the car and I'm actually headed to the eye doctor. I thought I'd start off the vlog series by just like random everyday events. I'm headed to the eye doctor. Like I can, I can't even see you guys out of these glasses. Like for some reason, like I like wore the coating off right where my eyelashes are or something like that. So I figured screw it. It's been like six years since I got new glasses. So I'm gonna go get new glasses. And then um, I've got a bunch of other stuff to do. So we're just gonna go on some errands and see how the day goes. I have a bunch of work to do at home, but priorities, <laughs> gotta take care of things. So Amy vlog number one, here we go. All right, so we made it. I'm here, uh, but I'm not gonna take the camera in there because you know it's a medical facility, confidentiality, and all that. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I'm gonna go get my eyes checked, see if my prescription has changed in the past six years, and then we'll head off to do our errands, and then hopefully make it back to the studio and get some work done before I gotta go to the day job. All right, see you guys on the other side. Made it, only took about an hour. I was able to get some new glasses. These aren't the new glasses, but I got my prescription changed. My prescription was off by a little bit. But now I'm off to start some other errands and then hopefully we'll get home in time to, I don't know, make some presets, <laughs> make a new post. I've got so much to do, make a new video. Uh, so anyway, right now we're off to the Apple store. I'm gonna go return my wife's Christmas present and get her something that I think she'll really like. So, off to the Apple Store we go. All right, so we're back. And it occurred to me as I was walking in here, like, we've never done the studio tour. I actually started to record one the other day, but they were like, chopping cement over there or something. It was like so loud, I couldn't even record anything. Uh, so today, it's kind of quiet around here and I figured, why not? Let's just do the full studio tour and make this part of the vlog. I love it, it's a perfect idea. So, you ready? Sign studio tour, here we go. All right, I'm gonna start over here on the left side of the studio, because this is the not as cool side, maybe a little boring, but uh, anyway, here is my tailor. This is what I use to provide for the family. This is my day job. I am a guitar teacher. I've been a guitar teacher for the past almost 20 years now. And this is my trusty 214. <laughs> you can see I've worn down the sound hole. Um, I've been playing this guitar since I turned 30, so probably about 13 years. And it's my trusty workhorse. I've adjusted the truss rod multiple times. Um, it's tried and true. I don't know how it's still going. It's actually USA made. That's a 2008 214 cutaway. So um, it's still going strong and I'm thankful for that. And I got a um, Fender ukulele back here. I also teach ukulele sometimes. And um, this is the case to a guitar we'll see in a little bit. I got some cool plants here and I have my old school dual core MacBook Pro 13 inch there, which probably needs replacing, but whatever. It's what I use when I play live. And I've got two Philips like LEDs. I think these are just like the Hue LEDs and I can set these to whatever color I want. And I found that like the, the kind of yellowish and the almost light purple is a really nice combination. They're complementary colors. So that's a nice combination. And then I've got this, you guys see this on camera all the time. Th look at, it's it's a custom wood laser cut Sinfera sign. And um, my wife bought this for me when I turned 40, I think. And it's so cool. Cause look, it's made out of wood and it's painted, but it's laser cut. And it's just like, 
I love it. It's so perfect and precise. So that really sets this corner off. And this is actually um, just a piano. It's not like an exciting keyboard or anything. It's a Yamaha, I think it's a 650. I bought this for my daughter so she could play piano. Um, and it's kind of been through the wars. It's been through a couple moves, but it's a digital piano and I, it's here. And now that it's cleared off, I used to have the pedal board on top of it. So now that it's cleared off, it's kind of a nice to just like sit down and like hit the sustain pedal and just play piano. Like I'm not a piano player at all really, but I kind of enjoy just kind of playing in some minor keys, just some brooding piano music. So that's cool. I totally enjoy it. Um, so that's the left side of the studio. This is my chair. Um, this chair is like Amazon, like hundred dollar gaming chair. And um, with these chairs, like I think all chairs suffer from the bad piston. So the piston um, went out on me in like nine months and then I replaced it uh, with like, you know, like a 30, dollar like 400 pound piston and it's been great but it's like squeaky as hell so the thing i like about the chair obviously is the arms fold up so when i'm playing guitar like they don't get in the way but um the squeaky thing kind of sucks and i don't really want to take the piston apart i put some tri-flow down there try to help the situation it only help for like a day so that's the chair the chair is nice it's comfortable i have a cushion on there um for extra padding uh and it's, you know, like I said, it hasn't dipped on me yet. So that's good. Um, so that's that. That's the, the captain's chair, so to say. And then over here, um, this cool dragon. And my wife was like really into feng shui for a little bit. So she like got the dragon. And this is a custom uh, 3D printed cat that was free um, when I bought these stands. Like these are like, the company's called 3D Waves. And... Um, they make stands for all kinds of different synthesizers. So I have one for the DeepMind over here, and then I also have one for my HydraSynth. I got them on Reverb.com. And so they came with these two little cats, and my, my younger daughter stole the other one. So I love that. That's cool, so you can hear the squeak of the chair. And so that's my second um, little cat. And then I have my monitors. Now, I don't know if you guys can hear this, but the monitors make this kind of like electronic, like feedback. They've always done that um, for the past, I don't know. I guess they were perfect for the first like couple years I got them and then they started doing that. I don't know why that is. I have like, even in the back, like I've tried XLR cables, I've tried quarter inch. I, I have them on like a little ground loop isolator in the back. They're five inch equators and equator as far as I know is no longer in business. And so I've been debating on whether to replace these or not, but um, they, I mean, they're pretty good. I asked my friend, I think I might upgrade to like some sevens or something. So once the Patreon hopefully takes off and you guys sign on, you can check it out, patreon.com slash signs of life. Um, we're gonna get some new monitors in here so I can like really hear some of the lower end frequencies. I want some like seven or eights that would probably be appropriate for this size space um and so yeah uh those will eventually be replaced and maybe i'll just have these as like tweeters or something but they've been good for since 2013 and all right so anyway now um here we have the push and this was a push too that like don helped me get um on like an artist discount like he contacted ableton when he was using live and he got us pushes. So we got pushes for like a really good deal. It was like, like almost half off, it was crazy. So that's been going strong. Um, there is a button here, the scale button, which like it crapped down on me for like a couple weeks. Like it would not move. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm gonna have to take my push apart. But it didn't, it like held on there. And somehow one day it just started magically working again. And that's the most important button on the push for me. Like scale like you know just like push the scale button so that's still going strong it's propped up um this is a, a new monitor i actually got this at costco um it's just like a it's a 2k monitor i i don't i don't like 1080p monitors i like 2k monitors i think they're way better um so they have like my first 2k monitor this is the dell which is a nice monitor i really like this monitor um and now the second lg so 
It's only got a 75 hertz refresh rate. Um, I think both of these have around 75 hertz. But I don't really game on these monitors. I just make music on them. So I think like if you're just doing like daily stuff, like that's plenty. It's fine. So that's that. Um, and yeah, now let's go look at the main rig down here. All right, I switched over to non-cinematic mode. And this is the new PC. I just built this thing. Um, I think I told the story on like TikTok or something. I won the Newegg Shuffle recently. And I, it was like the third time I entered. I was so lucky. I, I won the Newegg Shuffle and I won the opportunity to purchase a 3060 Ti at retail price. So the 3060 Ti, and it came with, like I had to purchase a motherboard with it. So it was a B550 motherboard with a 3060 Ti, and I was like, oh my God. Like I couldn't pass that up. So I bought it, it was delivered in like a day. And then I'm like, well, like my old rig, which is over there, um, like I, like I was like, okay, well I, I might as well just build a new computer since I got a new graphics card. So it's got a um, 5900X in there, it's my first AMD chip, it's super sick. And so, um, yeah, this thing is fast. With the 5900X, I, I haven't even like stressed the graphics card really. Like I've just been like exporting like movies in Premiere for you guys and like, it's really like, it, it's fast. Like it's a 20 minute movie takes like 10 minutes or like seven, if that, you know what I'm saying? Like it's really fast. Um, so I'm super happy with this, 32 gigs of RAM, two M.2 drives, an SSD, which I installed. Um, it's my second PC. I used to be a Mac person. Now I just build PCs, I guess. <laughs> like I'm a PC guy now. So, um, cause of OBS and streaming and content creation, it just makes things a lot easier because OBS is so native. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the brains behind the operation. That's what like holds the whole studio together is this computer. And, um, it's great to have a machine of that um, caliber now. Super, super grateful. Moving on to the right, we have the trusty Hydrosynth. And as you guys know, this has been my baby now um, for about a year. And it's so funny, like I bought a Hydrosynth and I like Venus Theory, like put out a video, like shout out to Cameron. He put out a video and I didn't even like watch the video really. I just knew that I wanted a Hydrosynth. I knew that I needed a Hydrosynth. There was something about it. Like my intuition just kicked into like max. And I was like, I'm just gonna buy one. Like I'm, I'm not even gonna finish watching this video. I'm just gonna buy one and see what happens. And this was it. So we fell in love and we've been besties ever since. And the Hydrosynth is uh, extremely powerful. Obviously I could probably do well with a deluxe. If they ever made a deluxe desktop, I'd probably get that. Um, but eight voices, I run out occasionally cause I do use unison a lot and I use like both hands. So, uh, yeah, the Hydra is great. If you feel like you need more voices, go for the deluxe. Uh, otherwise the eight voice is perfectly capable um, of doing everything. I put out a cool video of me doing like a Hydrosynth like self playing patch the other day and it's it's just really fun. That's the whole thing about Hydra compared to my sad deep mind which doesn't get as much attention. Um, the Hydra is just fun. I just love it. It's just so enjoyable. Um, and yeah, so if you're looking for a hardware synth or maybe your first hardware synth, I'd highly recommend Hydra as your first one because like it teaches you so much about synthesis and it's just a great um, overall synthesizer. Sounds good too. Um, the effects are okay, but if you're running Hydra into say something like peekaboo over there, um, yeah, you probably might, you know, it'll it'll suit you well. So anyway, that's Hydra. Um, and then moving on over here, the other monitor. And um, that's my, my sort of sad Neutron. Um, so the Neutron is like, it's way over there. And I just never really gelled with the Neutron. Like, I think I want to do more experiments for you guys. So if you guys want to see more Neutron videos, I'd be glad to. Um, that would be cool. Like, we could do Neutron through the pedal board. That's always fun, right? And then I have a patch bay here. You see there's, like, a patch bay. And Don convinced me that I needed a patch bay with this pedal board. And the patch bay is actually really cool on paper. Um, and what it does is basically you can, like, individually route 
all of your effects that you have outboard effects and synths through that so it does help because it gives me a couple extra inputs um i say a couple like it gives you a lot of extra inputs so it's a balanced patch bay um so if you need more like if, like if your interface is small and you need more um you should probably get a patch bay instead of getting a brand new interface um so there's my um underneath it is a oh my old midi express xt from back in the day and then my um dbx 9 286s that's my vocal processor and uh, ever since i got the new pc like i've been struggling to like get the settings right with my audio i don't know if you guys have noticed like i'm just constantly playing with the the 286 and the focus right to get it right and i'm trying so just just know that like i'm trying to get it right i'm trying to get all the settings right and uh it's just a lot but um yeah it's it's a great i mean it definitely like levels up my my vocal processing ability so that's cool adds a little bit of presence to my voice um without going overboard and yeah, um, last but not least, we're going to take a look at the right-hand side and explore um, the pedal board and what's left. Okay, so I'm going to put this in cinematic. This is the pedal board. Um, the pedal board has been growing for the past, I'd say, like three or four years. I'm going to stand up so I don't squeak the chair. Um, this is like a three or four-year project. Now, these pedals, like my original vision was always to run software through these pedals. Easier said than done. I mean, you can do it, right? And all these pedals are really high quality pedals. And, um, you know, most of them are like instrument or line level. But I find like you lose, there's a lot of signal loss that goes into it. Like you lose a lot of signal when you process stuff. So like if you're thinking about pedals, just know that like they're not perfect. Like it's going to be, you know, it's it's a thing, right? Um, I know like State Azure does really well with his like uh, microcosm, and that's cool. And I do use that, but now I have a whole chain. I find that like I really enjoy um, just using guitar through it. I think it sounds better. It's fun. So I've sort of like abandoned, not fully abandoned, but kind of abandoned the whole like synths through this paddleboard vision that I had. Um, and I'm just going to do guitar through it. It's just, I mean, it's a guitar pedal board. You can see that it's just a linear path. Like it's starting at the tuner, compressor, Enzo, reverb, uh, at the beginning of the chain, Andy Offing style, and then mood, condor, um, data looper, iridium in the middle, polymoon, uh, L cap for looping and microcosm DD5, uh, 100 for extra ping pong and the big sky at the end so it's cool um it's a great board right now and i'm going to do my next ascent to the sky video um featuring this pedal board and one of these guitars over here so i my last but not least i'm gonna switch over to the regular camera and i'll show you my guitar collection all right so before we get to the guitars this is my little like crystal station um, this is kind of cool. I got my Soma FM poster from Rusty and um, this old like Indian, it's not a Cochina doll. I think it might be. It's it, it, my, it was actually my dad's. Um, my dad passed away a long time ago, but um, yeah, he sort of watches over the whole situation and it's got some spiritual value. This is a Lucky Bamboo, which has been with me for a long time. Um, so it's kind of still lucky. And I just recently reclaimed it. Um, and this is one of those fake CD baby, like, oh yeah, congratulations on your first record. But that was the first album, as you remember, that's the first Signs of Life record, Language of the Ancients. <laughs> um, just a CD pasted on a, a mat board. But yeah, um, I, I put, I leave that there as a reminder of where I started, you know? Like that's where I started. And, and you know, there's, just infinite amounts of possibilities where you could go next. Um, my lucky cat and my mother-in-law gave me um, to help me bring in the money. And this is my largest crystal right here. This is a light prairie quartz. This thing is freaking massive. Look how big it is. Um, and I got it from um, a friend of mine who I don't even know sell is selling crystals anymore. Um, she went by E360. That was her like business name. 
and she was in Colorado and I think she's a massage therapist. She might still do crystals. I don't know. Anyway. Um, so this, she was moving and she's like, like the, the price of that was originally like $400. And then she's like, it like went down in price to like, you know, like 200. And then like she, she moved one day and was like half off everything in my shop that's left. And that was still there. And I snagged it for half off 200. It was totally a steal, but it's served me well. And I keep charging it and recharging. I think it probably takes in a lot of the energy from all the electricity stuff going on here. So along with all these others, these are various crystals of um, importance. This is my largest piece of Moldavite. I don't know if you guys can see this. Yeah, you see that? This is Moldavite. If you don't know what Moldavite is, I highly recommend that you look it up. And if you don't have a piece, you should probably get one yourself if you're into crystals. Um, it's the most high vibrational crystal uh, on the planet, pretty much. It came here from a meteor. We don't really know when. Um, and there's only a couple different spots on the planet that have Moldavite still. And I think the supply is almost run up. So it's like, it's really crazy. When you hold a piece of Moldavite in your hand, you can feel it. It's, it's a very high vibrational crystal. It's one of the 12, I think, high vibrational crystals, either 12 or seven. Um, but yeah, Moldavite, this is, this is an amazing crystal. Um, highly recommend you get a piece, even a small piece will like give you that vibe. So um, I think the biggest pieces are no bigger. The biggest pieces on earth are like this, this big and they're like in museums. You know what I'm saying? Like it, they're huge but not huge, like, because it's just such a rare crystal. Anyway, so moving on, that's the crystal collection. Got some incense, got, you know, um, the wild unknown tarot cards. Pulled one the other day for, I think, the um, the new moon. And uh, got the Ace of Cups, which um, was pretty perfect for that. And then, uh, yeah, just some storage down there on the bottom, some petal boxes and cookbooks and random stuff. And this right here, okay, so the guitar collection. This is an Ibanez, which was given to me by a dear friend of mine. And it's an eight string. It's an eight string Ibanez, which needs a little TLC. I don't know how to fix this. If anyone knows how to, I guess I could sand it down, but then it would take the finish off. Um, but anyway, I have this tune right now. I, I struggled with how to use the eight string for a while. I was like, how, you know, like, what am I going to do with this? So it's actually tuned into a baritone tuning now. And what that means is, is baritone tuning is basically B standard for those of you who play guitar. And um, so what's interesting is, is I've got an E here on the bottom, which is essentially drop E, and then an E here on the top. And then the rest of it is in standard tuning, but, but baritone. So the middle of the guitar, I finally figured this out. Like, it took me a while. Um, the middle of the guitar is just straight, straight up standard tuning with two E's on the top and bottom. And it makes so much sense. And it's really fun to play now that I've got that. So I think I'm going to use that for the first Ascent of the Sky guitar video. And yeah, so that's the eight string. This is my Paul Reed Smith um, SE. So this is like a, the Korean one. My, my wife got this for me like a long, long, long time ago. Maybe 2010? For my birthday um and it's been my workhorse like i have literally used this guitar like twenty five thousand hours <laughs> i don't know i mean it's just like i've played this guitar so much it's it, you know like i said i've been a teacher now for the past 20 years um and that's been my my workhorse um and it's still going strong like it's it plays as well as the day i got it um pretty much the frets need probably replacing but whatever um this is my jackson warrior i got this in 2000 and six i think um it's a warrior and um it needs a little tlc as you can see the the bridge is sinking down you probably can't see that the bridge is sinking down to the yeah you can see it right there bridge is sinking down a little bit so i need to adjust the uh, spring floyd roses are so tricky um so i need to fix that or take it to a guitar tech and have him adjust it uh so yeah, uh, I think there's there's obviously too much um, spring tension, and I need to loosen that somehow. And then this is a guitar that I got for my daughter um, for her birthday a long time ago. Um, it's a Daisy Rock, so it was marked marketed as a girl's guitar, right? It's got a cool pattern. It's a Daisy Rock, and it's kind of a shorter scale, but um, I replaced it and I put like fake P90s on there. 
like a friend of mine helped me do it. Like, it's just like, it's so it's kind of cool. You know, these aren't the best, but I mean, I guess they're cool for like clean stuff. I really want to play this guitar more. It's kind of confusing, to be honest, when you're like playing on the fretboard and you get all those like distracting vines and stuff right there. Um, and uh, yeah. And then believe it or not, this is my oldest guitar. Um, not my oldest guitar, but my oldest guitar here. This is my old Ibanez Sound Gear bass. Look at this thing. Um, let me zoom out here. That's my old Sound Gear bass. I bought this in 2000, I think. It must have been the year 2000 um, from a music shop in Santa Cruz. And uh, this bass um, actually got fixed. The knob was broken, and I brought it into Brian at Griffin, and um, he totally hooked me up. So now it has just like a, a pickup switch right there and then three knobs. So that's cool. Um, he helped me out. So this guitar, or this bass guitar rather, is um, super sick and super stable and solid. And it's just a great, great sounding bass. I love playing this thing um, when I when I play bass. Um, it, rarely. I mean, I'm not like a super, you know, intense bass player. But yeah, um, so that pretty much does it. This, this room that we're in here is um, luckily a uh, back room in my house. So I'm super lucky. Um, that I have a separate detached studio. Just push the chair back there and you guys can see the whole room. There you go. And then it's an odd shaped room. It really is like, it's super strange, but so that's why Rusty hooked me up with these panels. Thank you, Rusty. I love you. Um, so these are like panels that were in the bottom of, <laughs> they're in the Soma FM basement. And <laughs> yeah, so um, now they're hanging up on my wall. Uh, and uh, yeah, they, they serve a good purpose because it surely deadens the sound in here. So that's it. Now you've seen the whole sign studio. <laughs> this is gonna wrap it up for ambient vlog numero uno, number one. This was a lot of fun. I actually went out with a agenda today. Like I think I'm gonna film the first ambient vlog and we did it, we made it happen. So I'm gonna have some lunch Maybe start editing this thing and get it up to all of you on Patreon first. Um, if you want exclusive videos like this, make sure to join the Patreon, patreon.com slash signs of life. Otherwise, thank you for subscribing to this YouTube channel and yeah, enjoy. I'll see you guys again for ambient vlog number two real soon. Have a good one. Peace.